So there are a couple of things that we want. Again, the knees as close together as possible, so there's a squeezing of the thighs that happens. I think that very few people, when the knees are close together, can get the back sitting bone on the ground. It's just much harder when the knees are closer together. It's possible, but you have to have very good inward rotation of the thighs. Yet, we still want to ground the hip joint as much as possible. So I like to do it with my hand. I can go in and find the pelvis and press it down. That's one, one version of what to do. And that's someone that's very high. She's actually not that high. I probably wouldn't do that on her, but so you can see. So that's kind of like step one, pressing down. Another thing that you can do is ask the student to do that for themselves by <laughs> to just lean in their hip joint, <laughs> but also by taking this hand and pressing the Padmasana foot in to the hip joint. So you can also hold on to the Padmasana foot and push it down. Make sense? And then they can actually do that with their own foot and their own hands. Right? Good. Awesome. Now, the other place that you can work, and I would say one or the other, is you're either going to work in the hip joint or you're going to work through the shoulder girdle. Okay? And then through the shoulder girdle, you can see that the movement of the, that opposite, the, the shoulder blade that's grabbing the Padmasana leg, just like in Bharata Vajrasana, is rolling down the back and is going in that sort of outwardly spiraling loop that's creating space through the shoulder joint. And this shoulder is moving forward and down and into the ground. Make sense? Okay, let's try the other side. Kind of like just another adjustment for Bharata Vajrasana, but the knees are together in this one, so it should actually it should feel quite different. You know, so it, it increases the internal rotation of this hip joint. And I think that when the knees are closer together, and this is just um, my experience in, in my own body and the practice, is that you twist a little more into your center when the knees are closer together, whereas the other one you seem to twist a little more, this is like outward, the energy is more outward, versus this is a little more collected, okay? So the first one, finding the hip joint and then just actually grounding into the hip joint. So I'm kind of finding the line of the iliac crest and pulling the iliac crest down. Or the other option, we can hold on to the lotus foot and press it down, which might be more effective. Then we can just make sure the knees keep squeezing together and the lotus foot is down, right? And then the shoulders. Can you guys see the different position of the shoulders? Isn't that really obvious? The shoulder blade's moving down the back and the shoulder's moving forward. So that's what we're going to continue. Shoulder blade moving down the back and the shoulder moving forward. And it's equal pressure on both. Otherwise, if you push her too much that way, the sitting bone will come up. If you pull her too much this way, that hand comes up. So equal pressure, knees squeeze closer again. Sorry, I took you a little off balance. And equal pressure through both shoulders will keep her aligned along the center line. This, when you pull this shoulder down and back, you can actually help ground the hip a little bit with that. But again, if you had another hand, it would be great to press this as well, but we are not Lakshmi. <laughs> okay. So I like to focus one or the other, but 